Rebecca, thank you. Uh, the, the, the theme of that drama, uh, of laying down one's life, is really at the heart of, of what we're doing here today. That, that in the cross, we have the ultimate, the ultimate moment of, of God laying down his life for, for us. Today, this weekend, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, cross, resurrection. Friends, it takes us into the heart of the gospel in a way that I don't know that anything else can. I'm so grateful that you are here today and that we can both celebrate and enter into the, the full meaning of this t t together. What is it about the cross? What, what is the meaning of the cross? What is it about Jesus' death that thousands of years later, we and many others across our world today are gathering to do what we're doing here today? What, what is the, the, the depth of the heart of, of this message? N.T. Wright in his book, the day the revolution began, reconsidering the meaning of Jesus' crucifixion. He, he says that sometimes there's this mystery around the cross that beyond all the theories that might be out there, it takes us into this transforming, overwhelming love of God. Here's a piece that he says in this book, the day the revolution began. Why is this story so powerful? What kind of sense does it make to suppose that the death of one man nearly 2,000 years ago, in an obscure Roman province, could have that kind of power? What sort of revolution is it that was launched on that dark and horrible afternoon? Before we go any farther into this inquiry, let's make one thing clear. You do not have to be able to answer the question why before the cross can have this effect. Think about it. You don't have to understand music theory or acoustics to be moved by a wonderful violin solo. You don't have to understand cooking before you can enjoy a good meal. I'm very much aware of that, personally. In the same way, you don't have to have a theory about why the cross is so powerful before you can be moved and changed, before you can know yourself loved and forgiven because of Jesus' death. Friends, sometimes when we look at that cross, it just overwhelms us, and we don't know why, and that's okay. That's part of this story. I'm just curious, how many people here wear a cross from time to time? Many people do. And there's a connection with God simply by wearing that where you feel loved, and it's powerful, and it's good. Because it's part of this idea that Jesus loved us enough to lay down his life. I remember back a number of years ago, I, I, was, uh, I was a young guy, I was a younger guy. <laughs> and uh, I found myself, I found my way into a Roman Catholic church on a Good Friday. And I, I, I did this thing called the Stations of the Cross. And the Stations of the Cross is simply you, you walk around and look at these stained glass windows that have the, the powerful scriptures and the story of Jesus' life leading to his death. And as I did it, it was, it was, it was, a, it was an incredible experience. And I got to a point where I just was overwhelmed, and I didn't know why, but looking back, I believe I just felt loved by God in a way that I'd never felt before. And I started bawling like a baby. And, and obviously there were people there that night to, to help people through this process. And so they kind of swarmed on me and, and like, are you okay? And I was like, I've never been better. <laughs> and it was just this amazing moment of feeling absolutely loved. Friends, that's part of the message of, of this day and, and this cross. And it's part of what Jesus meant when he said, I am the good shepherd, John 10, 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You see, sometimes, sometimes people begin to ask questions about the cross, and they begin to think, why would God kill his son? And there's this idea that maybe it's to appease an angry God, but that's not what this is about at all. Jesus laid down his life. He gave it freely. He gave it freely out of this incredible sacrificial love. For a world that he loved so deeply, he would do anything to redeem it. Friends, that's what this story is about. Not appeasing an angry God, but a God who loves the world so much that he would do absolutely anything to redeem it. 
So what does it mean for us to think about laying down our life? What, what does that look like in, in our context today if we're Jesus' followers today? This borderlines on trivial, I understand, but in some ways in our home, it's deeper than you might realize. I, I came home one night recently, and uh, I, I, I missed dinner on this, but it doesn't happen too often, but I happened to on this particular night. And uh, we were having steak, because steak was on sale, and steak isn't a normal thing in our house, so it was, it was a big deal. Well, when you have a 14-year-old son in your house, you don't fathom that you're going to come home and there'll be any steak left. <laughs> you agree? Honestly, guys, I got home, and Cameron had saved some steak for me. I felt loved. I really did, actually. I really, I really did. What, what, what about this idea of putting others first? You see, Jesus didn't just live, sorry, he didn't just die this way. He lived this way. He didn't just lay down his life when it came to an end on the cross. He lived this way all the way along, always living selflessly, always thinking about others, came not to be served, but to serve. It was just the way he was. It was his DNA. So what does it look like for us to put others first, to, to give up that parking spot sometimes, to, uh, to pass the remote along to somebody else in certain situations? <laughs> I'm obviously not there yet because when the game's on you, anyway, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what about this whole idea of giving blood? I heard a commercial the other day on the radio, and it, was, it was just, just struck me when I was thinking about today and laying down our life that it said we're not, you're not just giving blood, you're giving life when you give blood. How about this one? Giving your liver for your niece. Friends, we've been just blessed over this last month, actually, it's, a, it's a, a story that's been taking place the last four years in our church. There's a young woman named Tori. I think we have a picture of Tori. And Tori is, is here today. And uh, we're just so grateful for that. Tori has, uh, she's spent more time in a hospital in the last four years than most of us will our whole life if we live to 100. And, and some, of the, some of the repercussions was that she needed a new liver. And, and this was serious stuff. It can be hard to find a, a match, and, and, and finally it was discovered that her Aunt Kyla, and I, I think there's a picture here with Kyla in it as well, that her Aunt Kyla was a match. And, and so Kyla donated her liver. About a month ago, the surgery happened. I think we have another picture here. Maybe not. But Kyla's here as, as well today. And this is a story of someone laying down their life and of giving their liver to their niece. And we're so grateful that all has turned out well. And God has blessed you, and we're so glad you're here today, guys. Thank you so very, very much. I know we're not supposed to applaud, but you can on this one. Okay. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life. And then he goes on to say, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. You see, part of this laying down his life is to offer us a relationship that also transforms us over time. That he, as our shepherd, knows us so well. He, he, he knows the sheep, and the sheep know him, and there's this beautiful relationship. That he knows our name, Scripture says, and knows everything about us. Do you know how powerful it is when somebody knows your name? Here's a story. Jane Vardy walked into our church many years ago to a, to a, a bazaar on a Saturday morning. And there's a piece of her story that it had been many years since she had walked into, the, into, a, into a local church. It took great courage for her to do that that day. She met someone named Judy Reed. Judy Reed has been a, a prayer warrior in our church and has taught many people to pray over the years. Judy's just an amazing ambassador for Christ. And so Judy knows the importance of learning somebody's name. So Judy got to know Jane at the bazaar that, that day. And it was months later when God gave Jane the courage to walk through the doors on a Sunday morning. And on that day when she walked through the doors of this church, with all the courage that it took to come, because you know all about that if you've been in that, in that process before, guess who was the first person she met when she walked through the doors? Judy Reed. And you know what Judy Reed said? Judy Reed said, this is after several months, Judy Reed said, Jane, it's so good to see you here this morning. 
the power of someone knowing us so well, knowing our name. God, our shepherd, Jesus, who has laid down his life, knows us and calls us by name. And that's part of the love that is a part of this cross and this relationship, friends, that we're all invited into. So, what's the impact of all of this? Because as much as it is about us individually, which is very significant, transforming, life-changing, overwhelming, awe and gratitude, surely it's about a little bit more than that. N.T. Wright, when he talks about this idea that this is the day the revolution began, he said part of the power of the cross and Jesus laying down his life is that this was a day where evil was named that it would exist no more. That this was the beginning of a revolution to fight the, the darkness that is in our world, to heal this broken world in which we live. So the cross isn't just about when we die, we go to heaven. It's more about God bringing heaven, the hope of heaven, to earth through us and in our lifetime, even if we just get a glimpse of it here and now. That was Jesus' prayer. Jesus' prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be done on as it is in heaven. Like friends, bringing heaven to earth and this cross reminds us that our God was willing to give up anything, anything for that to happen. You remember um, Popeye? How many here remember Popeye? If you look it up, if you Google it, you'll find it if you don't know it. But Popeye had this thing where, where, where he, would just, he would just be in an experience and he would say, enough is enough. And then he would say, that's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. And then it would lead him to action. And friends, that's part of this story. That God came and said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I've been looking around the world and it's broken, and it needs some healing, and it needs some hope. I'm going to give everything I have to that, and I'm going to invite those who follow me to do the same by the power of my Holy Spirit. Let heaven come to earth a little bit more. Each and every day we put our feet on the ground. This stuff is so real. I, I don't know where you're at in life. or even in faith. Some of us are, we're just getting started, and that's so cool, in this Christian walk. Wherever you are, we're just so glad you're here. But friends, one of my hopes and prayers would be that there would be no one who goes away from today, not knowing that you're loved, and not knowing that this stuff that we talk about, it's so relevant, and it's so real, and it's happening in our world all of the time. Here would be just one example for us today. This is a picture of Madison Street. For those that know the story, this, this is just a few kilometers down the road from us. There was a tragic fire just a few months ago. And as many will know, part of that tragedy was there was a, a young girl who was, who was left on her own. Her parents and her older sister were killed in this tragic fire. A devastation, a, a tragedy. This is... Friends, this is the broken world that we live in. This is, this is a piece, just a piece of what God came in the cross to say, no more. Let, let's, let's work to redeem these situations and to bring resurrection hope in whatever way we can. The Saturday following the fire, a few of us just felt moved to go over to, to Madison Street and knock on a few doors and, 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 and to simply say, we, we know it's been a tough week and we're we're thinking of you and we're praying for you. We, we took some Joshua 9 mugs, which says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When it was appropriate, we gave those mugs out. The response, friends, it was overwhelming. We talked about the possibility of maybe this summer working together with those who live on that street to have a neighborhood party, to, to bring some love to the street, to, to remember what had happened in a way that could bring healing, to help neighbors get to know each other. Again, the response was overwhelmingly positive. That's partly why we're going back today as part of the Good Friday Outreach, to continue that relationship and building towards this summer where we can have a street party and bring life where there has been death, which is resurrection in the midst of loss and the brokenness of this world. Because we know as Tony Campolo likes to say, and certainly our church has heard this before, we know 
that it may be Friday, but what's coming? Sunday's coming. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the incredible power of your presence in this place today. And that your love for not only us, but for this world, that you so love the world, that you gave of yourself so fully, it, it inspires us, it awes us, and we're grateful for, for the, the, the magnitude of your love for, for us, for each and every one of us, but also for this world that you love so much, this world that you created, this world that you continue to come and redeem, and somehow part of the power and mystery of this cross was that you were naming that evil will have no more stand, that you will fight that even and sometimes through us as your spirit lives in us, O oh God. And for this revolution that you began so long ago that continues today, we give you thanks and, and praise. Thank you again, O oh God, that you lead us to this cross time and time again to experience that power of your presence and of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.